Do you wish your professor did a better job explaining this integral? I remember being stuck on this in school, especially when trying to solve this in my head. But I found this awesome trick that makes it easier to understand. I'm going to share it with you. And don't forget to also stick around because I'll give you a bonus tip at the end as well. You guys ready? Class, begin! <laughs> Let's start by setting the integral of x to the n dx to a function we'll call f of x. And this is really useful because, first of all, if you remember, when you take the integral of an n-order polynomial, integrating x to the n will give you an answer where x will have a new power of n plus 1. It's going to be 1 more than what it used to be. But when I write this f of x, there's this unknown here, and this is maybe where you've been struggling. Okay, so you have x to the n plus 1, and you also have this constant k in front of it, but we don't know yet what k is. And that's why we're going to work out the details below, because writing this down generically with some constant k and solving for it makes it a lot easier to understand. And also notice I didn't forget this plus c constant at the end. You want to make sure when you're taking an indefinite integral that you don't forget that as well. Now, I want you to think backwards with integrals and forwards with derivatives. So the derivative and the integral, they have something in common, right? They always change the power of x by 1. If you think of f of x being this answer, whatever you get when you integrate x to the n dx, we're going to call that the parent function, the original function you got with. Notice that for that original function f of x, it must be true then that if you take its derivative going in the reverse direction, you end up with x to the n in the original problem I gave you, right? But notice how with x to the n, we have a 1 in front. But for the original parent function, we have some constant we got to solve for, which is k, in such a way that when you take the derivative of f of x, you get this answer that just has a 1 in front of x to the n, right? So we're going to go ahead and do that. And before I go on, if you're enjoying this content, feel free to smash that like button and subscribe, ninja style. <laughs> All right, so if f prime of x, the derivative of f of x is x to the n, that also must mean then that you get that when you take the derivative with respect to x of f of x, which is this k times x to the n plus 1 plus c, right? And if you remember with derivatives, the constant, that c, will go away. And then because you're taking a derivative of a polynomial, you take its original power, which is n plus 1, you bring it in front as a multiple, and then you reduce the power by 1. Oh, but check this out, right? Now you've got x to the n on both sides of the equation. And what's really cool is that this is really easy to solve for k because notice on the left-hand side, x to the n is the same as 1 times x to the n. So in other words, it must be true that 1 equals k times n plus 1. And when you solve for k, this will give you a result where k equals 1 over n plus 1. So in other words, whenever you integrate x to the n in your answer, based on what n is, the constant you'll end up with in front of that final x to the n plus 1 polynomial will be 1 over n plus 1. Now, there is a disclaimer here, and I want you to pay close attention. This works except for what value of n. Can you let me know in the comments below? All right, so moving on, I promised you a bonus tip, and here it is. The easier integral that we started with above was x to the n. But what if I gave you just any constant c? times x to the n. And I told you, you know what? I want you to integrate this ninja style. And I'm going to tell you that in this case, c is anything but zero, right? Based on what we did above, what do you think the answer will be in terms of c and n? Okay, if we need to do a walkthrough, it's the same idea as before. What we're going to do is we're going to set f of x to be the integral of c times x to the n dx. We also know that f of x after taking the integral and evaluating it must be something, this something is going to be called a constant k, times x to the n plus 1, the power 1 higher than what it used to be, plus c. And just like before, I'm going to take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. So f prime of x will end up with c x to the n because, remember in this problem, if I'm asking you to integrate c x to the n, we know that when you take the derivative of the parent function, we're going to end up with c x to the n, because that's what we're starting with, right? We're going in the reverse direction. Now, when you evaluate this by taking the derivative with respect to x, on the right-hand side, we'll be taking the derivative of k x to the n plus 1 plus c. 
And when you evaluate this further, you'll find that after simplifying the expression, you'll get Cx to the n equals k times m plus 1 x to the n, just like before. Now, once again, we want to solve here for k, but now you have a c on the left-hand side of the equation. But that's not a problem, right? Because we have x to the n on both sides. So it must be the case that c equals k times m plus 1. And then when you simplify this further for k, this is what you get. So you get k equals c over m plus 1. Now, for your homework, and you can leave a comment below on your answer, 